September 12, 2025. The sky is quiet. Then, without warning, a bright wound opens in the darkness. A colossal object dragging a kale so long it looks like a silver river. It's rushing in from deep space, its trail stretching wider than five full moons laid side by side. Before the first shock fades, a second object is confirmed. Two newcomers racing toward the sun, weeks apart from opposite corners of the sky. The official line calls them twin comets. But the numbers don't sit right. The timing is too neat. The behavior is too strange. It feels less like a coincidence and more like a plan. An accident from the stars? Or a mission with a purpose we don't understand yet? The answer begins with a detection that froze astronomers in their tracks. That morning, a space-based swan instrument flagged a new object, bright and unmistakable, carving through the inner solar system. First estimates said its tail spanned about five lunar widths, a giant brush trope across the night sky. That's unheard of for a newborn discovery. Early readings put its brightness around magnitude 7.4, faint to the naked eye, but visible in binoculars and easy for small backyard telescopes. Word spread fast. Within 48 hours, an observer in Australia caught a dramatic image, a streak so long it threatened to run off the edge of the camera. By September 13, the International Astronomical Union gave it a name, C2025 R2 Swan. In a single weekend, professionals and amateurs were trading images, checking brightness, and matting its path across constellations. Swan didn't just show up. It took over the sky. Most modern comets are dim, grey whispers that need big mirrors and careful processing to see at all. Swan was a shout. Its tail sliced through Virgo, brightening day by day as it fell inward toward the sun. Old-timers compared it to the greats. Hail bop levels of presence, the kind of display you remember for the rest of your life. And yet, under the excitement was something else. Disbelief. The scale, the speed, the way the numbers stacked. It didn't look like a normal icy visitor. It looked like something built to be seen. It wasn't alone. Days earlier, another object had already slipped into the inner system. 3i.atls If 3i sounds familiar, it should. One eye was Oumuamua in 2017. Two eye was Borisov. Three eye means another interstellar traveler. Its approach came from the direction of Sagittarius. Swan's track traced back through Aquarius. On a star map, those parts are more than a quarter of the sky apart. And yet, their closest passes to the sun, their perihelia, land in almost the same 10-day window. The numbers are startling. Atlas is due around October 17, skimming past the Sun at roughly 23 million kilometers. Swan approaches around October 20, at about 150 million kilometers. Different distances, yes, but the two closest points are only 50 million kilometers apart, closer than Mars ever gets to Earth. Both orbits are steeply tilted. Swan more than 60 degrees off the plane of the planets, Atlas nearly upright, almost perpendicular. The approach angles are so different that the odds of both crossing the inner solar system at almost the same time with such similar sun distances are tiny. Yet, here they are, converging. There's another twist. From October 8 to 18, the sun's glare blinds our telescopes. This is the solar conjunction blackout, the period when Earth, the sun and the target line up so that we simply can't point most instruments without frying them or drowning in scattered light. That blackout window covers the critical days when both objects make their closest dive. The moments we most want to watch, hidden by the one star we can't look past. Two rare visitors, two tightly aligned passes, one shared corridor in space and time, and the sky goes white. Is this bad luck? A coincidence piled on a coincidence? Or something else? Atlas was the first to bend the rules. Early spectra came in from multiple observatories and hinted at a composition no one expected. Nickel dominated, with little or no iron. That flies in the face of typical comet chemistry, where iron and nickel usually show up together in the vapour. Labs double-checked calibrations, forums lit up, teams asked for repeats. Then came a second surprise. Instead of the classic water signature, Atlas's coma glowed with carbon dioxide. The CO2 line at 4.3 microns, roaring five times louder than water. 
that can happen in very cold and far born comets rare but not insane what wouldn't go away was the tail behavior observers tracking atlas noticed a pattern three distinct bursts of acceleration not a smooth push from sunlight warming the surface but step changes the first hit late july the second mid august each pulse came with a sharp color shift in the tail from reddish to neutral and back again brightness spiked then settled it looked to some eyes like a thruster firing as if the object gave itself a kick and then let frictionless space carry it forward critics pushed back suggesting instrument drift or hidden errors but the timing lined up across independent teams from small observatories to distributed telescope arrays the co2 mix in the tail also seemed to modulate in sync with each jump a strange coupling that some nicknamed thrust mix modulation if the accelerations were real rough energy estimates put the power source at around 10 gigawatts the output of about 10 large nuclear plants that's not the kind of power you get from a sun warmed snowball most researchers stayed cautious natural processes can be messy and can fool us but the gaps in the data nickel without iron stepwise boosts synchronized chemistry kept a bold idea alive atlas might not be a comet in the usual sense maybe it's a probe or something acting like one swan meanwhile was writing its own rules the tail the brightness the sheer presence some estimates suggested a raw energy output thousands of times beyond a typical comet nudging into numbers you'd only expect from engineered systems 10000 gigawatts and up wild absolutely but the object refused to behave like fragile ice it stayed bright and steady as it drew closer to the sun where many comets break apart or flash and fade then the reflectance data landed normal comet cores scatter sunlight in a soft dusty way swan score reflected light with a sharper almost metallic edge a few careful amateurs comparing spectral fingerprints whispered a match not just to nickel but to a nickel cobalt mix alloys we use when we need strength and corrosion resistance the phrase nickel cobalt hull began making the rounds on late night streams and chat rooms half joke half dare around the same time observers reported a persistent silvery halo around the nucleus a shimmer that shifted in pattern and brightness like a veil of plasma to some it looked like an electromagnetic envelope a kind of shield that could deflect solar wind and grit that's how the nickname took root the fortress if atlas looked like a drone quick agile efficient swan felt like a tank slow steady hard to hurt even the tail seemed to carry intent fine grained analysis showed tiny rhythmic changes in direction as if micro pulses were steering the exhaust not random burps from a hot surface but controlled corrections coarse tweaks you'd expect from a system that wants to stay on a line and the orbit swan appears to circle the sun once every 22554 years that's older than written history reaching back toward the last ice age if it is engineered that would mean a preset course older than civilization set long before cities before writing before the stories we tell ourselves about beginnings now put the pieces together a fortress like object on a 22554 year loop an agile interstellar traveler both appear in the inner system within days their closest passes happen under the sun's glare when our biggest eyes are blind their geometries are wildly different yet they share the same narrow corridor in space and time the odds of this being random are tiny which leads to the question almost no one wants to ask out loud if this is a mission what's the mission for one idea is almost boring which is what makes it powerful a scheduled service stop in deep space planning the sun isn't just a bulb it's an engine missions use solar flybys for gravity assist and energy boosts all the time if swan and atlas are probes the sun is a logical place to top up they could be recharging swapping data running audits updating software all at a note that every traveler knows and every map marks with a bright star in that view the timing isn't a coincidence it's a timetable a second theory is less friendly intervention a rendezvous to repair recover or neutralize a unit that isn't behaving or a race between rival systems converging on a resource 
The power levels on the table, Atlas around 10 gigawatts, swan orders of magnitude higher, sound like reserves you'd need for active maneuvering, not passive drifting. The step jump accelerations in Atlas and the micro thrust rhythms in Swan fit a profile. Controlled systems doing controlled work. There's a third idea that feels like a story humanity has been writing for a century. The audit chain. In 2017, we saw Oumuamua, a sail-shaped mystery that didn't outgas like a normal comet and took a weird path out. Then came other oddities. Now Atlas, now Swan. Each new arrival could be a more complex layer. A progression from quiet flyby to active test to operational rendezvous. Not an invasion, not a hello, an audit. A check on a world that's been broadcasting for a hundred years. In all three frames, the sun isn't a backdrop. It's the beacon and the battery. It's where you would go. Link that to the deep past and the picture grows stranger. A 22,554 year orbit doesn't just sound old. It reaches back into a world of ice and dust. Around 20,000 BC, glaciers lay heavy over the north. Climate was shifting. Layers in Greenland and Antarctic ice cores show weird spikes. Dust, chemicals, signs that something dramatic lit up the sky more than once. Some researchers have pointed to those layers and asked if great comets swept through back then, leaving debris and memories. In southeastern Turkey, at a place called Gobekli Tepe, Pillars carved more than 11,000 years ago bear animals, symbols and patterns that some people read as maps of the sky. A few theorists argue those carvings record cycles longer than a human life, maybe even marking the return of something like swan. Most archaeologists and astronomers urge caution. The patterns might be stories, not star charts. The matches might be chance. There's no hard proof tying those stones to specific comet cycles. Even so, the timing makes you think. If Swan truly swings by every 22,554 years, its last bright pass would sit right where those ice core layers begin to come when the world was stepping out of the cold and first learning to measure the heavens. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it's myth rubbing shoulders with math. Either way, the feeling is hard to ignore. We've seen rare visitors before and they've always slipped into our older stories. All of that would be thrilling enough on its own. But the next chapter adds a layer of tension. As October arrives and both objects drop toward their closest approach, official observing schedules list system downtime for solar conjunction. Standard, expected. Beyond that, rumors swirl. Some teams say proposals for alternative coverage were quietly denied. Requests for raw data got delayed or rerouted. A few reviewers, speaking cautiously and off the record, say they were asked to avoid public statements about either object until perihelion. Agencies don't comment. The result is the same. Silence right when the sky goes white. Silence at the top doesn't mean silence everywhere. The independent networks don't sleep. A veteran orbit specialist known for open source tracking begins rallying a web of backyard astronomers and small observatories. The message is simple. Keep your scopes up, log every flicker, share raw data before it disappears. Collectives across Europe start pooling wide field sensor feeds. Radio amateurs dust off small dishes and swing them near the sun's edge to listen for tiny whispers in the noise. Some groups even repurpose weather satellite relays to hunt for out-of-band signatures. With the biggest eyes blinded and official voices quiet, the hunt moves to rooftops, hillsides and garages. If answers are out there, they'll come from ordinary hands. That's where we stand as the blackout begins. Two strange objects. One likely interstellar, one possibly on a cycle older than our cities. Different paths, same corridor, a window of time so narrow that it feels like a keyhole and both keys turn together. We don't know what they are, we don't know what they'll do. We know this, the sky rarely gives us patterns this clean without a reason. Maybe it's physics playing dice in a way that looks like design. Maybe it's design playing shy under the sun. Either way, when Swan and Atlas swing around and climb back out of the glare, the first real news may not come from a big press room. It might come from a backyard image with a timestamp and a shaky caption. I got it. And if the strangest stories are true, if Swan is a fortress, armoured, shielded, steering with plasma, and Atlas is a nimble scout nudging itself with burst of CO2, if the sun is their pit stop, their meeting point, their node, then we may watch something we've only imagined a rendezvous at the heart of our system, hidden behind our own star. 
or maybe we have watched a comet flare and fade and another streak away and chalk it up to chance. Either way, this is the part of the story where you lean forward, when numbers become mysteries and mysteries become nights on the roof with a thermos and a sky map, where rumors are noise and data is gold, where old ice and hot plasma draw lines across the dark and we try to read what those lines say. We've spent a century sending our voices outward. Maybe something heard. Maybe it didn't. Maybe these are just stones on fire. Maybe they're pages in a book we've just started to learn to read. On September 12, a bright wound opened in the sky. In the weeks that follow, that wound becomes a question big enough to hold the planet's curiosity. When the glare fades, we'll see what came through.